So structure is nothing but a collection of variables or, or basically constants, but you are combining them under a single name. So under a single name, you're combining it so that you can refer to them if you want to as a single name itself. The entire collection can be referenced using the name of the structure. So here I defined a structure operation. So I can refer to entire set of signals just by using one name. Each member within a structure also has a name and that also you can refer. So here in my operation, there are three specific variables of code, data and status. I can refer directly together as an operation or I can refer to a particular uh, member if I'm using a particular member. So a structure member is referred, it's similar, very similar to C, name of the structure dot member name. For example, let's say I have uh, created a structure name instruction underscore word and within that there is a member which is address which is 32 bit. I can access or refer to that member using structure name dot that particular variable or member name. Structure is different from an array. That array is a collection of elements that are of same type and size. So they are of same type. Structure is just a hodgepodge. It can be uh, a collection of members which are different. For example, here one is logic, one is data, one is status. These are different bits. So array is collection of same set of type and size uh, members. but our structure can be different. So array usually uh, is referenced by an index, index where a structure is referenced by a member name, right? right? Like here, I'm accessing a structure using instruction word dot address, the so name of the member. Array typically you will refer by an index. So this is the difference between an array and a structure. We'll see different types of arrays which system very long allows us to define a little bit later in this webinar. So structures is a collection or a group of variables or maybe signals or constants. And a lot we can refer to them together as a structure name or as a particular member name. Structure you can basically uh, use user defined types which can be created from structure. So for example, I created a type def instruction underscore word underscore t. So this is my definition, which is actually a structure, which means it creates, has a group of signals, one A and B, op code and address. So these are group of variables within that. Now, when I create, I, using this new type dev, I can create a new variable IW. Now this, when I create this IW, it will allocate a structure to it, which will have members A, B, op code and address. So whenever I can use IWS together, or I can refer to members of this IW as IWA, IW dot B, this way. When a structure is defined without using type def, it is usually referred as anonymous structure. So here I'm defining a structure called instruction, but I'm not used a diff type def. So it's basically an anonymous structure. Most common method is using a type def so that you can define multiple uh, variables uh, of that structure. How do you initialize a structure? So I created a structure named instruction underscore word underscore t. I now I want to initialize it. So initialization can be done by tick curly brace don't confuse it with the concatenation operator. It's this is a specialized operator, tick and a curly brace. 
and then basically i can provide values for each of the members of the structure in a comma separated format this is when you completely want to initialize all the elements of a structure you can assign values to specific members of a structure as well here you will use iw dot the member where you want to assign the values so i, I instantiated or uh, allocation of a structure iw iw dot a assigning certain values iw dot b assigning certain values iw dot opcode assigning certain values iw dot address assigning certain values so this is another way to assign values or or initialize value for a structure so you can completely assign values uh, to a complete structure as we saw here using a uh, tick uh, curly brace or you can assign values to basically uh, uh, a specific members of the structure. To assign values completely to a structure, basically use it between these tokens, tick curly brace and end curly brace. And within that you specify comma separated list of values of each member in ordered format and those values can be assigned, but it's in order. Alternately, uh, if you don't want to specify in the order, there is another way where you can specify in unordered format like this. For example, I want to specify this again, this structure, IW, certain values. I will use these tokens, tick, curly brace, and uncurly brace. But I don't want to specify values like I was doing here in an ordered format. Then what I can do is member name colon the value i want to give to that member member name colon the value i want to give to that member member name colon i mean so here it can be different order because i'm mentioning the member name name of the member of the structure which is for example let's say address i'm mentioning first the address i want to give value zero of code i want to give this value a i want to give this value b i want to give this value so this is another way uh, to define it. It's illegal to mix listing by name and listing by order. So for example, if I want to do mix and match, that is not allowed. Like here I'm using address, here I'm directly using value, this is not allowed. In addition to that, you can do a default value to all members of a structure using default keyword. So IW tick default colon zero, that means set all the members of iw to zero so this is how you assign value to the structure you can assign value together in ordered format you can assign value together using colon format where specific members are assigned certain values or of course you can use dot dot notation to specify the values specific to specific members as well now there is a one important uh a thing we'll understand and which is uh, also be important when we talk about arrays is packed and unpacked data types so here we'll talk about packed and unpacked structure so by default uh, so think of packed as unpacked more in terms of how software will store the values in its memories okay so when you say packed it means software will store all the memory together, all the values or all the elements of that structure together. So for example, I am a software and I am store, this is my memory. And uh, basically the structure elements, I will store it together when it's packed. So that means packed, packed together. But when it's unpacked, I can choose to store wherever I want to store. So, and, and let's take specific examples, it will become more clear. By default, a structure is unpacked. That means members of the structure are treated as independent variables or constant. And just that you are clubbing together in a single name, but they are typically different variables. A structure can be explicitly declared as a packed structure 
using a packed keyword okay so you can say struct packed that means it's a packed structure now a packed structure then software will store all the members of this structure in contiguous bit in specified order in its memory now since it's storing together there are some restrictions on the type of elements which can be present in a structure when it's packed so all members of a pack structure must be integral values and integral values that can be represented as a vector such as byte int bit logic so since they are being stored together then uh, as contiguous bits once you say structure is packed it can only have those sort of members which can be a represented as a vector a structure cannot be packed, a packed structure cannot have any members that cannot be represented as a vector. So let's take and see the example of it. This is a packed structure. So struct, I am using a keyword pack. It has these three elements, valid, tag, and data. And you see each of these can be represented as a vector so now how software will store is it will store them as a continue contiguous bit or contiguous vector first it is storing valid so if you see total are these are 32 bit then 8 bit 41 bits so basically 41 bits so it is first storing valid which is one bit then tag which is 8 bit and data which is 32 bit so it will stack structures are stored as contiguous bits of data that's why it can only have those elements which can be represented as vectors or what you call buses so this difference between tagged and unpacked structures tag structures basically typically are used for signals which basically you are just breaking it down into different variables for easiness for example signed or unsigned bits or those kind of things if by default a structure is always unpacked so that means it can have just any set of very independent variables just that for the sake of convenience they group together structures can also be used in module ports you can pass structures that's the advantage of it module and interface ports so for example i defined a struct here instruct word underscore t i can use i can define a port as as basically a type of structure so basically i'm showing definitions instruct word, word underscore t now oiw is a port so this basically makes system verilog much more robust that ports cannot just be bits buses wires etc you can have user defined types or structure in the port so iw is now a port of this module and iw itself contains so many things it contains opcode it contains uh, sorry it contains a and b opcode address all this and now this is just one port and all this is synthesizable so that's another advantage you are using much more uh, complex abstractions but these are synthesizable if there are any questions please feel free to keep typing uh, it in the chat window and uh, i will try to answer as as soon as i can uh, you guys just confirm you guys are able to hear me by typing it in the chat window are you guys able to hear me Just type yes or no in the chat window. Okay, great. So synthesis guidelines, both packed and unpacked structures are synthesizable. It's just that what they represent is different. Synthesis supports passing structures through module ports, in and out of tasks and functions, and assigning values to structures by member name and list of values. All these are synthesizable. So it may seem complex, but all...